this pest, that we, I don't know how many calls and things we get about this particular pest, but this is predominant. This is a, I mean, it's cray myrtle bark scale, right? Cray myrtle bark, we love our cray myrtles uh, here in Tulsa and, you know, most southern states and, you know, this area of the country uh, has cray myrtles. It's it, Right now, during the summertime, it's one of our main blooming flower plants. And they're that, beautiful. They're and beautiful. they're awesome. Different colors, Lots, yeah. different shapes, different sizes, right. but we've got a, a, what we're calling a cray myrtle bark scale that's been attacking it. Right. Yeah, so on the picture here, good good photo we've got. Uh, basically, this is pretty common of what we're seeing. You know, the main thing the homeowners are going to see, they're going to see this black sooty mold. And that sooty mold we'll get into later, but what that's caused by is by this actual scale. It's a felt scale, Tom, kind of different than a lot of our hard scales or our, our clam scales clam type shell scales that, that we have. Control's similar, but it's called a felt scale. Well, a felt scale, does that have to do, I've heard you, in the diagnostic process, you can actually squish them, and if it comes out pink, that's a kind of a confirmation that this is. It is. If you go to the next shell. slide, you can actually see the little critter with a microscope, and, and under each one of those white cottony uh, coverings are a lot of little babies out there. Mm. So That's each one of these, yeah, a lot of babies. So they lay their eggs. Those babies grow underneath that protection of that felt, and uh, then they come out to feed. So if you go back, I hate to keep going back on you, but the, so you see the white covering inside. That's that pink goo that you was talking about. Right. Those pink insects. The babies. Babies. Yeah. So we're looking there, and we see I don't know a couple of hundred scales but inside each of those scales there's more little babies so that are continuing their life a thousand or more that, that's right Insects that's right, right. Wow. so i mean and they're all protected each one of those you know they're they're feeding um the as as a lot of sucking insects as they take in juices they've got to excrete some so they excrete a, a product called honeydew, honeydew. It's, it's a sugary substance that falls off. You may have seen it on your cars uh, when you park underneath trees. You oh. get kind of sticky stuff. Oh, that, that is that falls. what that is? Yeah, kind of nasty. So uh, what's happened on this black, on this leaf, that, that sugary substance fell on that leaf. Right. Uh, and then a, a sooty mold, a mold fungus. I think we've fungus. got a better picture of that mold. Yeah, that. so a, a mold has attacked that sugary substance, causing it black. Yeah, that doesn't look very healthy. It, it doesn't. It, it's not too bad on it, right. uh, just re really bad on appearances. But the black is, is the telltale sign, and that's what we're going to start seeing a lot coming up later on this fall. So the, the black mold, I've heard it attracts ants. Do ants get in there with that, the honeydew? They like the honeydew as well? It is. You know, one of the, one of, another sign that you may have a scale insect, and, and crepe myrtle bark scale will fit into that category, is a lot of ants crawling around the trunk. Right. Those ants are harvesting that honeydew. Right. They're eating that sugar. So yep. it's kind of a, a, a cycle there where they're feeding on the honeydew, uh, taking it back to their nest, feeding their babies. But, you know, right. but the main thing is, is, you know, if you see a lot of ants, you probably got some scale insects. On so it's that. good for the ants, but it's bad for our crepe myrtles. Not so good on our crepe myrtles. <laughs> well, that, so, yeah, as this goes, I mean, you'll, you'll get, you know, this, this particular one's probably six months infested, maybe uh, a year infested. Right. You start seeing that black all over the trunk, not just on the leaves. Um, it's really easy to see in the wintertime once the leaves fall off is that black sooty mold. Right. Or there's another picture. You, you can see it on the, like the bark of the tree that's not covered up by the leaves as it drifts down. Yeah, so that's, down. that's an, exactly what I was talking about, a winter, a winter shot where right. we don't have leaves. We see a lot of black on there. Right. So a uh, bad, bad insect. Uh, again, I think about, you know, best, my best estimate is about half of our crepe myrtles that, that we have in town right. are affected with, with crepe myrtle bark scale of some sort. Well, I know just driving around town, it's, it, sometimes you'll notice outside of a housing development or something, they have a whole row of crepe myrtles down there and you look and they, they all- They all look black. They all are black. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just you know, spread. That's, that's kind of an incubator to spread to other crepe myrtles. That's right. And they're not moving much in the wintertime. I mean, we get some warm days right. that they may, you know, they may feed a little bit. But for the most part, they're kind of dormant. I, I don't mm -hmm. like to use that word, but they're kind of dormant a little bit in the wintertime. Right. Spring times when they really start, just like everything else growing outside, they'll really start act activating, essentially. Right. Uh, they'll come out of that shell, start crawling around, uh, start finding another place to, to mate and start, start a new, you know, a new life cycle essentially in the spring. Well I know myself, I, my neighbors headed across the street from my, our house and so I kept watch 
And then sure enough, one day I went out there and saw it, but it was just confined to one branch. Yeah. So that's like an easy removal. Yep. Get Snip rid of that go. branch and it, yep. it, was, it was good to go. But where did, the, where did this come from? You know, it, it's kind of an odd deal. It hadn't been around that long. I right. think 2004, uh, we found it in Dallas. So blame it on Texas. Well, blame course. it on Texas. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, 2004, we had a landscaper that kind of came across of it. And then, you know, we got, got the uh, Texas A&M involved and kind of right. got some studies done. and. Uh, it's it's another type of scale that has just shown up. It actually come from China, uh, is where they think they traced it back to. All right. Well, we've got a map here that kind of shows the distribution here in the United States. And you're right; it is kind of confined to this southern portion of the United States: Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. The green uh, counties are the one that are are have been confirmed, but there's a lot more I know out right. there that we just haven't confirmed. I mean, this one is July 2nd of of this year in 19. Um, but you know it's it's pretty solid and it's it's a it's a big problem we have right so if you've got it what do you do about it so now the big question is 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 how do you control it That's i mean right. you know a lot of the times it's kind of similar to what our scale control is going to be where we use dormant oil in the winter time right. uh, dormant oil is a thick oil that that covers and coats that particular felt or that insect suffocating them Right. So in theory, sounds good, but man, you saw in those pictures how many they are. It, right. it really takes some diligence to get them fully coated. Right. Um, it's not like they're going to walk through an insecticide, take that up, and kill them. Right. You've got to get it on them, and it's got to coat them enough to suffocate them. Well, and they, they call it dormant oil because it's, right, it's thicker, and you only want to use it on dormant plants. That's correct. Because otherwise it will smother them or damage the leaves. You wouldn't want to... You wouldn't want to spray this dormant oil on a plant that's got leaves. That's it. right. You know, leaves leaves that are out there, it's it's designed to, to coat and suffocate. So, right. uh, yeah, we've got some summer oil that's a little thinner right. oil, but uh, it, it's not as effective. It just needs to be, you know, needs to be covered in the in the wintertime in, with that dormant, thick, thick, thick type oil. Right. Well, I've, I've also heard one of the recommendations is you can grab it. You can get the branch, depending on the outbreak, how much you have, you can get a stiff brush and a bucket of soapy water and get out there and, and scrub them off physically. But I mean, that's gonna get pretty tedious pretty fast. And if you've got a great myrtle that's taller than you are, which most of them are, that doesn't seem like a good plan A. I've got kids at home and, and busy in the in the evenings and I don't feel like going out and scrubbing my crepe myrtle No, I know when, when I was reading that, it's like, well, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Well, let's see what plan B is. Some of you right. crazy gardeners could probably do that and spend about an hour or two, no, that's but no, okay. that's, that's okay. I mean, it, it, to one is each own or whatever they right. say, but uh, it, it can be done. Actually mechanically removing with a scrubby, so, uh, a scrubby brush, a scrubby brush, how about that? Brush. A, a, a brush that scrubs you know, scrubs that off. Stiff, it, stiff, a stiff brush. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it can work. Uh, I like the dormant oil. I like that in wintertime when we lose our leaves. Um, I would like to see that done about every month. Um, in the winter? In the winter. Probably starting December, January, and February, and even March. Right. So that's, you know, three or four times, three or four applications, making sure that you're going to get it good and covered. Right. So that's one option that we have is, is kind of the dormant oil suffocation. Is there a chemical option? For there, there are. Or? We need to kind of wait until, you remember I mentioned about when they were crawling right. uh, in the springtime, they tend to get outside that felt and when they start doing that we can put in a contact insecticide on mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, bifenthrin. Bifenthrin is one that, that tends to work pretty good. Um, it's fairly safe and it's pretty targeted. So those soft-bodied scales, when they get out and start crawling, we get bifenthrin or, or, or any other type of, of landscape insecticide. That should, since they're soft-bodied, should control them pretty easily. So bifenthrin that you're mentioning there, that's the actual name of the ingredient, not the, not the product. You'd have to go to the store and look for a product that had that as an ingredient. Correct. Right? So yeah, you're going to have to look at the fine print and find right. bifenthrin as an active so ingredient. Take your magnifying glass. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. But, but no, I mean, I did say fairly easy once they get to crawling. There's nothing easy about controlling these guys. Right. There's, you know, they're not all going to come out of that shell at the same time. Right. So you're going to have to have, some's going to come out now, then another couple weeks, then a couple weeks. So it's going to be right. kind of a continued process. Right. But we can use that bifenthrin or insecticide, that contact insecticide, throughout the season as we see the crawlers. Right. Well, one thing we know for sure is they're everywhere. You can just drive around town and see them, you know, the parks and yards, and it's almost unusual to see one that 
But uh, if, if you that, don't that see doesn't it, have it. That's, yeah, if that's you don't right. see it now, you you likely will see it because that, that, it's, it's on the move. And that's it's, exactly right. It's pretty robust. You know, there's been some talk also about uh, systemic insecticides. Systemic oh, insecticides right. usually work pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. The some of the issues that we're having with some systemics is that we don't know if it's going to transfer into our pollinators right. to our pollen. So for right now, Oklahoma, uh, we're not recommending systemics for right. controlling uh, scale, these crepe myrtle bark scale. Um, there may be some safer alternatives that come out or some, some alternatives that, you know, aren't quite going to, you know, going to get into but the pollen. that's a negative effect. That's kind of a negative effect. Right. Um, those, those products are labeled for scale. But for right now, uh, Oklahoma State University is not recommending uh, systemics. Right. And when you say systemic, a systemic is like you buy a concentrate, mix it up in a bucket for the recommendations, and then you pour it around the base of the plant or shrub, and it gets absorbed up into it. So it's a, it would essentially be killing them from the inside. They're protected in that shell. That's correct. But then they're not protected when they're sucking. When they suck the, they suck suck the juice, and the juice carries the pesticide. That's and correct. Them. That's but correct. But then it'll also go up into the flowers. and That's correct. That's correct. It, so, you know, like holly, uh, holly gets some scale, uh, mm -hmm. armored scale. Right. The, you know, there's not a lot of flowers on the holly bush, essentially. Right. So a systemic would work pretty Pretty well on that because we're not too worried about transferring that systemic insecticide to our pollinators or right. to our bees. So right. hollies uh, and other type of, of landscape plants, that, that systemic can work pretty well on that. Just be careful and be aware that uh, if they are flowering and we have treated them with some systemic, there could be a chance that we transfer right. that through the pollen. Right. Well, that sounds good. Awesome. Good luck with that one. That's a hard one. Uh, it will we'll get some control of it. We've just got to be educated about it, know what to do, and timing is everything. <music>